again, Lord, your grace over all of us here gathered in the name above all names and who we pray by, and that is Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have kept us throughout the week one more time to gather here. And we pray over this story, O oh Lord, in your holy word to bring you glory. And the glory that we pray, O oh Lord, is that you and only you the word, your word declares, will draw unto Jesus Christ in this hour so that they may be added to the body of Christ because by faith they surrender their life, humbly open up their heart. For the Lord Jesus Christ to save them from their sins, to change them from a sinner in need of a savior to a saint that is now your child, O oh Lord. We pray that you have drawn several here, O oh Lord, and throughout the week as you take us, your children, to be used in the highways and byways, as commissioned and sent by you to be uh, a living witness of you, the only and true living God, of the light that you sent down here, Jesus Christ, that the message be, they repent, they turn from their sins and turn to Jesus Christ by faith, that he died on the old rugged cross, high on Calvary almost 2,000 years ago for their sins, that their case has been forgiven against you. And that all they have to do is allocute before you. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of the Savior of the world to save me from my sins. I, I surrender my life and open up my heart. Take over. Teach me and train me so that I can live like you and live for you. And through your Holy Spirit be used. That when the Father draws many, it be not to me, but it be to you in me, that they too can be forgiven of their sins against you, O oh Lord. Pray, Father, that you gain that glory right now. And that's what we seek, O oh Lord. This is centered on your message to mankind, your grace of salvation to mankind found in whom we pray this prayer, Jesus Christ, and say, Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we are back again. <laughs> Welcome aboard one more time uh, to those that are my brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To those that have yet to surrender, thank you, thank you, thank you for answering the call from God who loves you to be here, to hear what he has to say to you and that he loves you above all and that he has his arms wide open waiting for you to surrender to Jesus Christ. Open up your heart. And surrender. Confess. He is. The Lord. Believing it in your heart by faith. And asking him to come into your heart. Into your life and take over. And save you from your sins. Because you surrender. <laughs> and you believe that. Wholeheartedly. From your heart, you believe it 100% by faith. Um, so I welcome those that are brothers and sisters in Christ, those that have yet to surrender to Christ. Um, I thank Dr. Thomas Blackwell this way and Joshua. But above all, after I thank family and friends and blow my kisses to Mama and 
to Talia Hannah, and to all the kids out there in this world, oh Lord. I'd like to thank thee, Almighty Father, for making this happen. I'd like to thank the Lord Jesus Christ, my personal Lord and Savior, Savior of the world, and Israel's Messiah. And I'd like to thank the <laughs> Capitan, God, the Holy Spirit, who is in the midst here. And I pray moves upon me in a special way that first this, this story work on me even more uh, than it has in times past. And that it works on everyone out there. And that please take this message, this story, and pass it to everybody you have on your list. That is being a disciple, okay? That is being Billy Graham of the Billy Graham of the internet, okay? You take it, you post it, and you share it. Plant it, water it in people's lives. Holy Spirit will be the one to raise up the harvest. That is being a disciple. And when you hear it, you pass it on. We live to give. And we give because we live. And we live in Christ. And we live for Christ. That is a disciple. That is what we are supposed to be when we surrender. Where the goal is to become a disciple. A living witness. A living, only true and living God. Okay, commissioned and sent, and the message is to repent. And we are to also know that the Lord loves us. We know we're sinners in need of a Savior. He loves us so much that he sent the way for us to be with him. That is by faith. We play faith in so many of our plans that have failed, but this one will not. This is a plan that by faith will not fail. Faith in Jesus Christ that he took your case, your rap sheet to the cross. Bodily he died. Bodily he was buried. But when he rose bodily three days later, your case did not rise. It's, it's buried. It's gone. Okay? It's been forgiven. Jesus even uttered it on a cross. Forgiveness. Okay? And since he died for all, he forgave all, which includes you out there. And all you have to do is just step forward. Say, you know what? I won't change. Lord Jesus, save me. I surrender. I open up my heart. Come inside and take over. Be your Holy Spirit, who I surrender to, teach me and train me to be about your will. To trust in you. To obey you. To obey your word. Keep it in my heart. Name of Jesus, I pray that. So, last week we, under the theme of surrender, which we're basically doing a little snippet review of what took place last year, 2023 of April through June, mid June, uh, we started on another reason why we won't surrender, and that was coming out of the Book of Judges, and that was because we just simply refuse to move forward in life we refuse to go to the next level we stay stagnant on the level we're on content where we're at and the israelites contentment had a purpose okay they didn't Ref, uh, judges too they said that they refused and rejected to obey God they, they, they just literally ejected and rejected him and his word okay because they had a plan when we turn refuse reject eject God and his word out there's a plan and the plan is me, myself, and I. 
I want to do it my way. I want to be on the highway of my way. I ain't got time for your way. And man, when I tell you they went there, judges, uh, has a highlight of two scriptures that says in the time of the judges, in this period, the people did what was right in their own eyes. They lived their way. They did what they wanted their way. It came up the way they wanted. It was all about the highway of my way. And this was a generation that came after Joshua and the original elders. Moses is gone. Moses, Joshua, the elders of that time are gone. This is a generation. They didn't know about all this. Okay. Um, in, I'm going to read a little section here um, in a minute. But going back to this here, they refused to move forward. They chose to live for self and not for God. Judges, when you see it, they refuse to obey God's command to wipe out completely the enemy. Oh, but they decided to, you know what? I hear what you're saying. You want them gone. Man, but we can come up from this. We 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 get pay, we get some we get some paper through this, man. So they did accept the tribute. Okay, you know what? We won't get paid. You know, there's, there's another plan that we got. I hear, we know about this plan, but no, 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 no. I like this plan here. Okay, and this started before Josh, right before Joshua's death. You know, you could see that infusion of what was about to come. Okay, and yeah, look what happens. We go. Let's go to chapter two here, because um, we're gonna move into the another reason why we won't surrender according to the book of Judges. We, we see that it was a refusal to move forward, but the next one will be idolatry. You know, Judges reveals how sin would lead to their captivity, a season of captivity, and really physical captivity, let alone spiritual captivity, okay? Um, in Galatians 6, we see that God is not to be mocked. What we sow, we shall reap, okay? Um, that's one point about judges sin leads to captivity and it's funny how the people in jesus's time i believe that's john 8 said they've never been captive they're children of abraham they've never been captive boy they didn't look back at the scriptures of old and see uh, captivity throughout their generation and if they would have really, really been in the scriptures, they would have seen this. They, they would have seen, they would have noticed something like this. Okay. They would have noted that, you know, that was a bad period in our history that, man, we just went there. We went there before God and we got a can of butt whooping over and over and over again. Yeah, we were captive physically. Okay, I mean, you can look at the times of Syria, the, the, the Babylon. You can see what Rome did. I mean, how can they sit here under captivity to Rome? You follow me? And, and look back at their history and, and still, but that's just our nature. Okay, but going back to this, this book reveals how sin can uh, cage you, can put you, it can put you in a state of captivity. To be physical, like we see this here, um, but definitely spiritual, which was another thing that uh, uh, angered God. 
okay? And God had to, who is just, deal with this, okay? Now, another point about judges is also an account of apostasy. I mean, a revolving door of apostasy. Constantly turning from God, his word, his will, and turning to self and the wants. And the wants were sin. They were sinful. What they wanted to do was sinful. Okay? The two good big areas of judges wraps around that and it kind of correlates to the scriptures of set, set judges 17 6 and 21 25 where the people did what they felt was right in their own eyes live do get and come up how they felt was right in their own eyes the flesh the flesh okay um and living according to the flesh now saying that in judges chapter 2 verse 10 we see that um on 9 they buried uh joshua and then in 10 it says all the generation that was gathered unto of the the elders the fathers they're all gone and this is a new generation that did not know the Lord, nor what he had did from Egypt through the wilderness to this land. They were not at all connected with that. This is where the problem took place. Somewhere, one generation to the next, there was a, a, a short circuit. Something took place where uh, transmission did not continue. It became interrupted. And when it became interrupted and continued, it continued in a different way, not as the way it was, okay? And this would cause a catastrophic problem for Israel. In verse 11, it says, As soon as this original generation that trusted and obeyed and walked with God, okay, were gone. It says, the children of Israel, they didn't say a neighborhood or a sect, I said the nation did evil before the eyes of the Lord. I mean, that's just like walking up into heaven. Just give me one second. Knocking on the door. Check this out. I mean, they just didn't care. They did not know him, okay? I walk with him. Wanted no relations with him. Had no relations with him. Oh, I'm sure they knew of him, okay? And wanted to do nothing with him, okay? One thing about knowing that God exists is another thing to walking with God, okay? Having that relationship with God. Um, here's the plan. We're going to utterly turn from God, his word, his will, which is what they did, which is sin. And the plan was to turn to the false gods of the nations that they refused to utterly get rid of okay and in this verse 11 the one of the false gods that would continuously plague them Balaam or sometimes you may see the word Baal and you may see Baal slash and a, a different name but it's the same Baal okay 
different territorial name, but it's the same bail. Okay. Um, they did not only turn to this false god, you know, but they surrendered to this false god. You know, we surrender, we surrender to serve. Man, they surrendered and they said they served Balaam. How can you serve something that's dead? I mean, if I made, like I said last week, if I made this here microphone, my God, and here I am like last week. Hum, 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 hum. Yes, my Lord. Right away, my Lord. How is this possible? I'm, I'm, I'm worshiping. I'm surrendering and worshiping, and basing my life on something that is dead. Doesn't has no life. There's there's nothing here. How could this help me in times of trouble, in times of distress, and how, how could this really provide my needs? Huh? This is something that's an inanimate object. But man, when we in the flesh go there, there is no limit to how evil we can be before God in the flesh. I mean, we will up the ante over and over, many times over, over and over and over again. And the people reveal what was in their heart. Uh, they didn't want nothing to do with the God of their ancestors, the only and true living God. I'm pretty sure they had an idea of how they got to this land. I'm pretty sure they've heard, okay? But they wanted nothing to do with that God. But yeah, we'll, we'll take the blessings though. We'll, 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 we don't mind chilling here, you know? But nah. I'm sure they had to have heard something about the pilgrimage from Egypt to here. I, it's not like, oh, we're here. And, no, I'm pretty sure. Some of them. But nonetheless, they reveal what was their motive. Sin. When we sin, we sin against God. Not caring, simply just going buck wild, anything and everything goes. And in doing so, they turned from the God, the true living God, who blessed them to be in this land in the first place. And made them a promise of never leaving nor forsaking them. And to formulate a nation of nations that would be a light to the rest of the world. Okay, they turned that light off. They went in utter darkness, okay? And not only did they do the evil, in verse 11, in the presence of God, and reveal their motive is that it ain't about you, it's about this God, okay? But in verse 12, it says, they utterly forsook the Lord God of their fathers, their ancestors, which here we go, brought them out of the land of Egypt and they followed other small g gods, the false gods, okay, of the gods of the people that were around them and they bowed themselves unto them and they utterly teed off the true and living God. Man, he could have just threw them in hell at that point. He could just utterly just drop balls of fire. He, 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 he could have just, just did away with them, okay? Mm -mm. Nowhere in that scripture, even though God is utterly teed off to the bone, did it say any of them got judged right there and then. You know, if they committed adultery, stone them in, right there, stone them to death. It was nothing about God killing them. He teed off. Okay? Verse 13. 
And again, it says, and they forsook the Lord. I mean, we see it in 13. We see it in 12. You know, and we kind of glean that it was taking place in 11. I mean, hey, they did evil in the presence of God. And by serving Balaam, they forsook God. So three scriptures in a row, you see this. They utterly bailed. They, they just, look, I'm bailing on you, but I ain't bailing on Baal. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. But here we go. Baal, okay, known as, uh, let me think. He was the false god of rain and fertility. I mean, come on, you know. And then here we go. Ashtaroth, goddess of uh, crops, they said, and uh, crop fertility, okay. And she was also one that uh, was a goddess, they said, of war. And here we go, sexual love. She was one that was about sexual immorality to the uttermost and guttermost. Okay, so you turn from the true and living God to live a holy life that pleases him and, and, and that it shines as a wonderful uh, light to the rest of the world in darkness. Okay, exposing the darkness because in John 1 it says the light shines in the darkness darkness cannot put it out because darkness has no power over the light that's what they were supposed to be but they chose to turn out the light and stay in darkness and Jesus said you know hey people won't come to the light if they truly truly are in love and sold out for darkness that's going to be a problem and it was a problem here Okay, but now you got in verse 11, you see Baal. Okay, and now in 13, you see him again, but this time with Ashtaroth. I mean, now they up in the ante. It ain't bad that we turn to uh, Baal here, but now we, 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 need to, we need to add a hey, Ashtaroth. I mean, come on. Uh, okay, and then when you finish, uh, okay, uh, we we, the, we speak a, a, a human language. Talk to me. Ah, uh -huh. man, what now? Oh, come on. They don't talk. These are dead items. There's no life. But this is how dark. We can get we will turn from the one that gave us this light gave us this day blessed us with reasonable portion of health and hey, you're going through stuff and you're still here man count your blessings look around the world and see what people are really going through and here in the u.s there are things going on around the world that in the u.s we won't see okay of suffering challenges okay but look at these folks here. Now it's, it's two false gods. That quick. Okay? You know? When you dive into sin and you sell out for sin, look out how quick that virus like COVID just mutates. And when it mutates, it gets more complicated and it gets more stronger. And it gets a bit more challenging if you want to get out of it but thanks be to god who has made it so easy for us up here yeah we in idolatry we might touch on it today but I, we are in idolatry this nation is heavily bound down in idolatry okay but thanks be to god the father who sent God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who willingly came here for me and for you and for everyone on earth, generation after generation, with forgiveness, with mercy, 
because he understood and he can connect with compassion coming in the flesh with our struggles, with our weaknesses. And one of these weaknesses being here, turning to false gods, idolatry. Okay? In verse 14, and it says, And the anger of the Lord was hot. We talked about this last week against Israel. And yeah, here we go. Galatians 6, not to be mocked. Boy, he they reaping something. He delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Sin will make you weak because there is no power in sin. There is a, a virus that makes you weak. And before your enemy, you become weak weaker okay it is only by the power of god the father and god the son the lord jesus christ on that cross okay it says in this first corinthians 1 18 it is the power of god romans 1 it says that it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone who believes romans 1 16 okay it's power that came from the Father through the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, okay? But in sin, selling out the sin, selling out to the darkness, bowing down to the true master behind all these false gods, Satan himself, okay? There's no power. There is a dreaded virus called sin that weakens us to the point we have no power in ourselves to get out of this darkness. That's why I said the Father is the one who calls, who chooses. It is he who draws us to salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. It's the Father's work, okay? On our own, mm -mm. There ain't nothing in the Bible that you're going to see that on our own. Oh, yeah, you know what? What you going to do? Man, I'm going to rob that liquor store. What? Hey, um, I'm going to roll with you, man. But you know what? I think after that, man, I'm going to walk over to Jesus, man. And you know what? I'm going uh, to cash in my check, bro. Uh, I'm finna, what you feel on doing? Yeah, I, I feel on doing this, this, this getting saved thing, man. I, I feel it. it. It's my time. You know what I'm saying? I did a lot of licks, man. But you know what? Trying to kind of get right with them, you know what I'm saying? And just get to, get this over. No! Girl, what you finna on doing? Girl, I'm finna on getting my nails done, get my hair done, get all whipped up. And, and, and yeah, we gonna go out, we gonna have a good time, girl. Them, they looking good, we gonna have a good time. And What you doing after that? Girl, there's an after party. No, you know what, girl? I, I think after I get my groove on, I... I'm finna on going, finna going to Jesus. I'm gonna call Jesus and, I, and you know what? It, it, it's it's time you know what it's time it's time for me to go get get, get this get this sin thing right and uh I, I'm gonna get right with Jesus I'm finna go on, go on to him and uh I'm gonna break bread with him no stop it <laughs> come on hey Pookie what you finna on doing finna going over there down to that hood man and, and set things right man we gonna set this off we gonna do this right what you finna on doing that uh you know what man uh we finna on taking again these other fools over here what you gonna do Pookie hey man you know what I gotta do this man you know what uh, I'm gonna get me a little 40, man. I'm gonna get right, man. And you know what? I'm finna go to Jesus, man. I'm finna get this uh this 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 thing right with him. We're gonna break bread, man. We we'll get this homie thing together. No! Stop! That's not how it works. On our own, never. The flesh will never surrender to Jesus Christ. But it will here to the one in darkness. And man. Look what happened. You became weaker than your enemy when you bow down to the enemy's God. Bow down to the gods of this world. Sell out to the world and what they call life. Life abundantly. That sin is a virus that will weaken you to the point where you are weaker than your enemy. 
But thank you, Lord, that in Christ Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, we have something in us that these individuals didn't. And even the ones that are acting like this today. Power! But we ain't got just a little itty bitty inky dinky power. We got all power when we have Jesus. Because Jesus said, I have all power in heaven and on earth. He is the omnipotent God in the flesh. Whom that we surrender to will come in and tabernacle and live with us and in us. And that power source is with us. When he rose bodily on the third day, hallelujah! What rose wasn't just Jesus Christ in the flesh. What rose was the acknowledgement, the message, the testimony, the truthful testimony that power over sin, thank you. Power over Satan, thank you. Power over death has now risen and is living, it's breathing, it's active eternally. Hallelujah! And if you surrender to that right now, that is what you get walked over to out of this den of darkness. And look what happened. Verse 15. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil as the Lord has said and as the Lord has sworn unto them. And they were greatly distress man you keep i just shared this with somebody today who's on this road and i shared with them the hand of god will not relent when he has called you he has chose you and you you continue to go down this road you will become greatly distressed you will be pressed you will be distressed. You will be stressed in mess. Continue. It will be stressed in recycled mess. He, he won't relent. Will not let up. It will get worse if you continue down this road. Look what it says in verse 16. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. A third point about the book of Judges, and it's the Bible itself. We live in sin. We were born in sin. We live in sin. We bow down to sin. We worship sin. We we, we swim. We revel. We, we dress it up. We just become sin. Utterly filthy. Okay? And in doing that, has nothing to do with the one that's in our conscience. God is in our conscience, Romans 2.14. But man, we just turn from him. Even us up here, Gentiles, and people up here today, okay? They knew of, we, we, we know, in America we know. We, when we go down this road, yeah, we turning from the true and living God, okay? What do you expect to happen? God's going to look down and instead of us being greatly distressed, pressed and distressed and, 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 and stressed and mess, we're supposed to be blessed with his best? No, that ain't how he works. Okay? But man, verse 16 is beautiful because it's a third point about judges. Our failure in the flesh, bowing down to sin, worshiping sin, okay, loving sin, living for sin. Hell, we are we are so bad. We not only listen to sin, we learn about sin. 
We get our masters, our doctrine in sin. Sinology, okay? You went to, I went to school, man. I just finished school. We were, what? Man, Pookie, you bad. How'd you do that? You didn't finish high school. And you don't need to finish high school to get a degree in sinology. <laughs> That's how we are, man. We get that bad. And that failure that you see here, and not just here, but you see it up here in today's time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us before the foundations of the world. Having your corporate heavenly powwow about me, my brothers and sisters out there, all those through the ages up to here and those to come till you say it's over, thank you. Because we were all judges 210, down up to here 15 greatly distressed because we bowed down, we surrendered, we dove in, we walked with, we lived for, we fought for, we defended sin. And we utterly, utterly teed you off. When we hit the age of accountability where you now know we are accountable for us since we did not care. We did it over and over and over. How many of you out there have paid a terrible price, have been distressed beyond belief, and perhaps are right now, but have continued to do what we have talked about here? Continue to provoke your maker, okay, who right now if you don't know Jesus, is hanging over you as judge. Okay? And when you hit flatline here, you will wind up by yourself and to yourself, because you live for self, in a place known as spiritual death row. Not, not San Quentin, okay? Not, not Folsom, not Leavenworth-type prisons here on earth in the flesh. No, I'm talking about a prison in the spirit. And when your name is called, your case is called, okay, you're going to hit flatline a second time. But this time, it will be a spiritual flatline where we are spirit inside of this body. This body will hit flatline here in this life. But, man, you hit flatline on the other end that's the lake of fire, Revelation. There's no plan for you to come back again. There's no more what your name is out there. It is, you gone. You literally, this is, I'm going to share like this. Little illustration, okay? Okay? Give you a little hair. That's, that, that's you right there, okay? Look at my great Picasso drawing here. I'm going to bring it up a little closer. That, that's you right there. That's you. But then this is what happens when you get to that lake of fire and, and, and that there's a blank here. You are no more. That is what God said will happen to you if you continue to do this right here. Okay. You turn from me and you turn in this direction over and over, and this is how you live, and this is how you die. Hey, look what Jesus told the religious, the, the religious leaders, the Pharisees. He told them where he is going, and we know it's heaven. They can't follow. They ain't coming. Why? And he told them, you will die in your sins unless you believe in who he is. And man, what I don't want is for you to drop dead in this lifetime having that pharisaic type mind when you look at Jesus and you say who are you no I'm here to share who
who he is. He's the way out of the life that has you distressed because of your sins. We make the choice to sin. God does not preach to us. He does not influence. He does not uh, raise up, cultivate and raise up sinology in us. Now that came from Adam. And through the DN, spiritual DNA of Adam, we were born in it. We grew up in it, and lo and behold, we started doing it, okay? Don't matter who did more, who did less. One sin drops you in the bucket, and the one sin that drops us in the bucket to that spiritual death row is we were born in it. We cannot escape that reality. There are false belief systems in this world that promote a heaven or promote some kind of happy ground afterwards. But guess what? Christianity is the only one that can boast that the true and living God was afoot here on earth. Okay? And paved a new way after teaching it, living it, giving proof of it, walking it. Okay? He, he took that journey to Calvary. Okay, and he died for it. He died for what, what, what he stood for. Okay, sin didn't kill him. He died for our sins. He sacrificed himself for our sins. The true and most holiest and perfect sacrifice, only sacrifice that was in true perfection of holiness is God himself. He had to come down here and pave the way. You have an opportunity to come down that way. Okay? And get out of this state of distress that you're in. You know what's stressing you out. Okay? Don't fake a funk. Don't point fingers. Don't don't guard this and God touched this to me. God did no no. God has a purpose. Watch this. He raised up the judges, verse 16. To deliver them out of the hands of, the, of those that's the enemy. God is here to tell you, I am here speaking to you, whoever it is out there, okay? That is your time right now to be delivered from the hand of the enemy that has you in a spiritual chokehold, okay? Chained down, captive, because of your life of sins, okay? This life of failure before God because we turn from him and turn to the false ones of this world, okay? And how does he do that? He delivers us because he loves us and he delivers us because he forgives us. You've already been forgiven back there. It's up here that matters. God has forgiven you because he loves you. He wants to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. Deliver you from that stress, that mess. The season of being dis greatly distressed, okay? But watch this in verse 17. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a hoaring <laughs> after other gods, bowed themselves unto them, turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in. Again, here we go. They turned from that walk with God, that walk of holiness, that walk that pleased God, obeying the commandments of the Lord. They turned from it. Okay? They refused to do it. Verse 18, and when the Lord raised up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of their, them that oppressed them and vexed them. I mean, mercy. God forgives you. He loves you. He casts down his grace. Mercy. Okay. 
Verse 19, and it came to pass when the judge was dead that God delivers them. We don't deserve this. They didn't deserve this, and we don't deserve God's forgiveness. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve his mercy. We don't deserve his grace. No, we deserve to be killed right now. Just, just do away with us. We don't deserve to be in this heaven. What have we done to earn, to, to, to say we merit it? What have we put on the table to negotiate? We weren't born in it. We certainly didn't live it. We don't deserve it. Okay? But look, he, he delivers them from the enemy. He delivers you from your pain, from your suffering, from your struggles, all your challenges. He gets you out of all of that. And look how we how people how human humanity responds. And it came to pass when that time faded away, they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them, bow down unto them, and they ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn ways man we are some hard-headed prideful folk okay god helps us yeah man it's on and cracking i'm free now i'm good and we go right back to the same old path and look we do it worse than we did it the first time in the time before that in the time before that we just keep getting worse Okay, verse 20, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because these people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice, I will also not henceforth drive out any of them before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. You know, God has a purpose. All these sufferings, all these temptations, all these uh, situations that, that 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 we gravitate to that get a hook on us you know the life of sin has a purpose we see it in the bible it's to lead us to an inevitable moment we need help we just can't fix this we need help and now I know the help is from above. When you say in your word, there is one that you raised up almost 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah! And when you raised him up, you just didn't raise up a temporary moment. Okay? You just didn't raise up an inky-dinky moment to help us through a season. And then... The new season will bring up a different reason, and then you'd have to bring up another judge, and then another judge. That's what you see in this book, okay? But almost 2,000 years ago, was raised up upon onto this earth a special judge, okay? A one-of-a-kind judge, kind and compassionate caring judge a judge that was not in the courtroom in his threads looking souped up living good and away from the troubles and the people who were in those troubles no this judge was raised up amongst this sinful batch of folks was raised up in the den of this sin, but never sinned. Thank you, Lord. It came down here to image the glory of your holiness, purity, goodness, that the Bible said would follow us all the days of our life. And we surrender to it. Surrendering to him. This wasn't just some ordinary type of judge that you raised up. 
He had a uniqueness, a one of a kind. He looked at us in our weakness, in our failed status before the Father, and said, come to me. Come as you are. I don't care how you're dressed. I don't care how you smell. I don't care of your diseases. Doesn't matter what you stole, how you robbed, how you diseased, deceived. Didn't matter if you were in adultery. Didn't matter if you were rich or poor, what color you were, from what nation. Okay, because he said he would draw all from every nation unto him. Okay, this was somebody unique. Who when he looked, could say, I have compassion amongst them all. I see their dreaded disease known as sin. Okay? Upon the midst of my holiness. But that is why I came. I came to be a gift. I came to be the reason for their season. And not just this season, for an eternal season. And that judge that loving, compassionate individual is Jesus Christ who looks at you right now and says, if you continue down this road, I will see you later, but not in compassion, in condemnation and damnation as a judge. But I'm here now to be your friend, a friend to the end, okay? I'm here to be the answer to all all that has you distressed. I am Jesus Christ who died for you back then, almost 2,000 years ago. I came for you. Before that, I had you on my mind. Before I said, let there be. Before I even planned for let there be. I had you on my mind. Through the eternal ages, I had you on my mind. Hundreds and thousands of generations before, I had you on my mind. Before I said, let there be, I had you on my mind. And when you became, I had you on my mind. When you were down in this tunnel of sin and darkness, I had you on my mind. The question is, do you have Jesus on your mind right now? You're ready to receive him in your heart by simply surrendering to him as a sinner in need of him, the Savior. I pray that you do and that you can continue on this journey with us next week as we continue in this theme of surrender in the book of Judges. Okay, we'll get into the idolatry next week because I, I, this is not a rush thing. This is, I love you as God loves you, and I care about you as God cares about you, and I want you to open up your heart and let God in. Let Jesus Christ in, because he loves you. Father, in the name of love, you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now, all brothers and sisters lift their hands and their hearts up and pray for those that do not know Jesus right now and throughout the week moving forward that will hear this message that they know there's a way out of being distressed and being blessed with the best. And it starts by surrendering to Jesus Christ, staying with him, because that is the best who will be the one to bless. In the name of Jesus, I love you. And above all, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit love you. Be blessed. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.